Welcome to Ed Space, the show where we discuss the week's top stories with Mint's editor Sukumar Ranganathan. Sukumar, welcome to the show. Thanks for taking time out. Let's quickly start by talking about the Tata and the Air Asia Alliance. What do you make of a of a new airline entering the sector, which is already struggling? You know, uh, they could have easily invested in an existing uh, player. See, I think you have to look at it from two or three different perspectives, mm-hmm. right? Um, the first perspective. Let's not look at a business perspective. I think you should look at a legacy, historical perspective. And I think for the Tata Group, mm-hmm. uh, they've been associated with airlines all right. their life. Right. Right. And um, they did make mm-hmm. one very high-profile but ill-fated attempt with Singapore Airlines yes. to, to re-enter the business. didn't really work out. Right. That would have changed the contours of the Indian market. If they had gotten in then in partnership with uh, right. Singapore Airlines, which is one of the world's best managed airlines, sure. didn't work out. Mm-hmm. So maybe there is a little bit of that mm-hmm. entrenched in the group. Right. Uh, a little tough to say whether this is entirely true or not. Also because the people have changed, right? Uh, yeah. JRD was the man who was very keen on it. Ratan right. Tata was also very keen on it. We still don't know about Cyrus Ministry, but maybe, uh, which brings us to the second perspective, which is a very much business perspective. Right. And I think what Indigo's success in this market has shown is that if you have a formula and you stick to it and you don't deviate from it. Right. You create your own niche, basically. Yeah, not a niche. Like, I, I think the time's gone, you know, mm-hmm. when, you can, when, when you could have called Indigo a niche and been correct. Right. I think it's it's now a Probably mass a bra- market player. Yeah, brand identity. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's, it's, it's become very successful. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very large and, and continuing to grow. And they haven't changed their model, right? Uh, so um, it's very easy to get tempted, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because your occupancy goes down a little bit and then you start flirting with the thought of, you know, putting in a business right. class, doing something else, right. offering hot meals and all that. But if you look at them, they've made some innovations, they've tried some new things, but by and large, they've stuck to the core. And and to me, the big learning from that is if, if you define uh, the lines that make up your box and, and then you play within that box, sure. you can probably do very well. And maybe the Tatas have seen that and, and they see an opportunity for them to get into that business. Right. Um, now, the third thing is, again, uh, an entirely different perspective. And this is based on what the Tata group itself has been saying, which is that it's just going to be an investor. Right? Yeah. Maybe it's team. looked at how AirAsia has done and looked at the business model they have mm-hmm. for this market mm-hmm. and said, listen, it's not a bad business to invest in. Right. Right. Uh, because again, the Tatas have been flirting with aviation investments, uh, the most uh, recent of which was in that logistics company. Right. Uh, never really went anywhere, but, but they've been, you know, flirting with these they things. They also and, have a stake in SpiceJet, I guess. Some, exactly. 6% or yeah. Uh, not a very significant stake, right? right. But so I think uh, maybe they thought this was an interesting way for them. Uh, to put in a financial presence in this. So you, you'll have to see how it right. works. I, I think it could be a little bit of all three, or, or maybe the business perspective is what it really is. I also think that it helps Air Asia that the Tatas are associated with it because they have a certain uh, brand equity in the Indian market uh, with the customers, with the regulators, right. because it's a group known to do things in a certain way. Right. Uh, by and large, sticking to the straight and narrow and, and not deviating from it, which actually could be quite difficult in the business of airlines. Right. But that may again explain why they didn't want to get into it themselves and have into a, a different, different operating phase right. uh, uh, to, to sort of insulate themselves uh, from the slightly senior aspects of this business because it's, it's a, you, you need to lobby a lot, right. you, you need to... You know, it's a high investment, a high risk. A lot sort of, of negotiation and discussions with the director general of civil aviation, right. with the aviation regulation regulator. The civil aviation ministry sort of uh, calls the shots on everything from mm-hmm. importing of your planes to your schedules to everything. The pricing, else. You mean. yeah, to, uh, it's a highly regulated. Exactly, sector. It's, it's a regulated sector. So maybe they didn't want to 
show their people. face, mm -hmm. but but just stay in the background. But but you'll have. To, I think it's a good move. I, I think if it works, mm -hmm. this might be a point of inflection in the Indian aviation market. It it, it could mean stability. Uh, right. Because you look at what's happened with Kingfisher's exit, Absolutely. rates have just gone through the roof. Yeah. Uh, so so basically, there's a space for, for another airline. A right? large airline, you know, not a niche player. We, we know, we're not talking of someone like Go or like Paramount used to be. Paramount is no longer the, there, although right. you know it's trying to make a re-entry, re -entry. which is a niche player. But someone who comes in and offers uh, a significant number of flights between large cities, not not to some feeder destinations or not to some non-metro destinations, right. And, right. and competes with these people and brings the price down. Mm -hmm. If you have five national airlines, it might be too much. Mm -hmm. But but I think given the present scenario, given the current scenario, I think there's room. So basically, there's room for them too. To grow. Talking about that, you know, it's, it's come at a time when Cyrus Mistry has just taken over the reins of Tata Group. What does it tell us about, you know, his probably his leadership style or future course of action? Do you think that he's really into diversification? We could see more of such entries into new to sectors. Me, to me, the first thing it tells me is that all of us were wrong, right? Because I, I think a lot of people, including our paper, uh, our newsroom, came, came up with this perspective of how his focus is going to be on consolidation, he's going to find his feet and then do things. And here we are. Right. Uh, he takes yeah, over in uh, yeah, exactly. He takes over in December, and and early February you have this announcement about entering a very making a very significant investment right. in a very interesting sector. So right. clearly, uh, if you look at all the things that he's done, um, he's building a new team. That much is clear. Uh, a lot of young people are are coming to the fore, which which is again very interesting Fresh because. Uh, we, we, it, it's not really happened in the Tata group. The, you, you look at many of the people, and, and, mm -hmm. and, and to be fair, I think some of these decisions may have been taken when Ratan Tata was the chairman, but, but if you look at Tata Global Beverages, for instance, it's got a very young right. uh, CEO. Uh, you look at Tata Starbucks, mm -hmm. it's got a very young CEO. You, you look at right. uh, Cyrus Mistry's team, especially, you know, uh, he's hired the former CEO of uh, the Bombay Stock Exchange. Yeah. Again, yeah a very young executive right. to, to look after a very critical function, which is business development. So I think he's, and then they have this chief marketing officer. So again, who's again, a young and uh, one of these high profile executives. So I right. think they're clearly trying to, re he probably is trying to rebuild the group. Uh, he, what is clear now is mm -hmm. that he has an idea of what he wants to do. He, he probably has, uh, a very definite plan of all the uh, new things that he wants to do and all the changes he right. wants to make, which is brilliant, right? right. Be because I think every chairman should sort of have a clear focus on, and, 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 idea. and have his own way of, you know, uh, how to do things. It, right. It's always good to uh, learn from people who came before you, but, but the reason why you have this kind of uh, renewal in organizations when, when people retire and other people take over, it's, it's, I, I think it. It's it's also for the purpose of growth and advancement yeah. and and differentiation and other things, right? They, they, everyone you just will look bring at it from a different exactly. Table. Everyone will bring something new to the table, and and all of us thought he would focus on consolidation, right. that he would be very conservative. Uh, clearly, he's not Good going surprise. to be conservative. He's made a large number of changes, and again, the, the final point is that it's, it's the Tata Group is a very conservative group, not the kind of group that's. Uh, where you see a large number of changes in executive profiles and right. all those things. And then you're beginning to see that. So, so I think um, it, it might be significant to focus on that aspect of it. Um, maybe it's, it's going to uh, become far more proactive and far more dynamic in, in how they do things. We, we'll have to watch. Right. So basically we could look at more such big ticket announcements. Yeah, as in, again, you know, I don't think we can expect too many announcements, but, but the airline one took everyone by right. surprise.